Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depends where you are in the world, but if you are in the UK, it is a stunning day. Absolutely lovely outside. Where are we? We are exactly three weeks to the day that we kick off our Premier League season for the 24-25 campaign against Leicester City away. Now, that means that the Premier League actually starts in about 18 days' time. So... Tottenham Hotspur, what are we doing and what do we need to do? Now, um, we heard last week from Ange Postacoglu that he gave a, a great speech, which I didn't believe a word of. Loads of fans have lapped up. It's difficult to do deals. Yeah, it seems difficult if you're Spurs. Um, our targets, basically saying that our targets, it's not our fault. It's on the other clubs. Um, sure, 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 sure. We've had a year to get all this ready. And again, we're at a position where with three weeks to go in the window, nothing's changed at the football club. A couple of kids have come in. Great. Everyone can rave about them all they like. Brilliant. And nothing's changed in terms of, hopefully, the goal at the football club being catching the top three, which is my goal as a fan. You might have different goals. As opposed to the fan yesterday who told me, I want Spurs to fail because it helps my YouTube channel. You would think that I'm earning 10 grand a month for my YouTube channel, the way some people speak. I am a football fan that has seen, I'm a Spurs fan that has seen relative glory. I've seen a UEFA Cup win. I've seen FA Cup wins. I want that glory again. There's no failure. I want standards up here so that Spurs can win trophies again. Anyone telling me I want failure, very childish, very silly. I've seen the glory. I want to see it again and I want us to go one better. If that's failure, fine. But I need Tottenham to start acting like it. Now, in today's video, I want to talk about lots of noise that I'm hearing from people I know um, that, that have got a lot of things right in the past. Now, listen, it doesn't make it an exact science. So today is a bit of a, a hypothetical, a bit of a potential. But the three names that really, really, really won't go away. Um, Eze's gone very quiet. We talked about Eze Frazier, so I'm not putting him in there. I can't see in any way, shape or form that Spurs have got the appetite, the ambition to go and get a deal like that done. If I'm wrong, fantastic. I'll be wrong. I'll do a stream and say I was wrong. Well done, Daniel Levy. I just can't see it. I really can't. I think if he leaves Palace, I think he'll end up at a Man City or an Arsenal. So I'm taking Eze off the table for me. And that will be a very nice surprise if it happens. I'm now lowering my standards like a lot of our fan base. That's where I'm at. I'm having to lower my standards because I'm always told I'm negative. So let's look at the three, which I think we will probably get done. Give or take. I'm not saying all three will happen. And the question I'm asking you is, how would you rate this potential treble signing? Now, I, I want to caveat the word potential. Potential. Yeah. That isn't me sitting here saying it's going to get done. These are the three that I believe make sense for how Tottenham act. Not make sense for me that I would buy, but make sense for how Tottenham act as a football club. This is what I think we will do. So the first player, well, I'll say the three players in question are Jacob Ramsey of Aston Villa, Jonathan David of Lille, and Pedro Neto of Wolves. Now, on the face of it, all three of those should be very easy to do. They should be, right? I'm sure people will go, oh, transfers aren't that difficult, aren't that simple. Sure. But on the face of it, you've got one guy who plays for Wolves and that's always injured. Right, you've got one guy who plays for Lille in France. No offense, Tottenham Hotspur, a much bigger club. We should be able to go and take a player there. And the other one, Jacob Ramsey for Villa, he's okay, he's a decent player. We should be able to get him if we want to get him. Right, um, Pedro Neto was at the Euros, but it was a long time ago now, so I can't see the excuse there. But we'll come to that in a minute. Let's start with let's start with the best of those three players, shall we? Let's start on the on the on the relative positive, okay? Because I know some people just want to see me positive for positive sake. Let's start clapping happily. Ready? So Pedro Neto, just kidding. Pedro Neto, for me, wonderful footballer. This is the one signing that I am not worried in any way, shape, or form about the ability of a, of the footballer. Not one part of me looks at this and says. He doesn't move the needle. I think he does massively. He is what we need on the wing. He's quick. He scores goals. He assists. He's direct. We've seen him at Tottenham. We've seen him ruin our defence. 
We've seen him play against us and make it look like our defence isn't even there. He's a top quality footballer. So why the hesitation in my voice? It's going to be the same hesitation that all of you will have. Any sensible adult human being will have this, this concern, this, this niggle in the back of their head that's saying, okay, Pedro Neto, quality player, but, and here comes the caveat, and this isn't just me. If I'm the only one that thinks this, then the world's gone mad. Pedro Neto, wonderful footballer, as we said. But the injuries are something that really have got to be taken into account. And I've done some facts. I know people don't like facts, but I've gone and had a look. And I'll give you those facts on him in a minute. Now, a fully fit Pedro Neto for 38 games of a season. I think we've got a top winger, one of the best wingers in the league. But, but he's never fully fit, is he? And this is the problem. So, first of all, what would the what would the price tag be? What would Wolves let one of their better players go for? 50? 55? 60? I don't know. I'm just I'm just spitballing. I'm just chucking some numbers out there for you guys in the chat to discuss. I don't know. I can't imagine it will be under that. I can't imagine a club like Wolves will go, yeah, we'll let one of our better players go for this price under 50. However, they might say, well, hang on, he's always injured. Um, we could probably go and scout and get someone that could potentially be better. I don't, I don't know. And let's be fair, you trust these clubs with better scouting than, than you do with Spurs most of the time. Now, if we look at Pedro Neto, in the last three Premier League campaigns, these are facts, this is not made up. In the last three Premier League campaigns, Pedro Neto has played 46% of all games available to him as a Wolves footballer. 46%. Let that sink in. So less than half the games available to Wolves, Pedro Neto actually is available to play in. So you have to ask the question. Again, ability to the side. No one's questioning the ability. People need to hear this before they go, Sava doesn't rate Neto. I really rate Neto. I really think he's a top player. But they do say, don't they? The best ability is availability and the guy isn't available a lot. So now you have to start asking the question. All right, you pay 50, 60 million for Pedro Neto. 45, 50, 55, 60 million. And the guy plays 46% of games. He might not, he might play a bit more, but he might play a bit less. But on average, this is what he plays. He plays 46% of games. So if you do spend a big chunk of your transfer budget on this player, inevitably, when he gets injured and is out for three months, four months, what we can't do as a fan base is then turn around and go, oh, that's unlucky. Oh, that he's injured and Ange didn't have him available. Because we know the red flags are there. It's like doing a credit check when you go to get a mortgage. People will check you. They will put red flags. The credit companies will put red flags on you. They know you're a risk. And that is how they calculate what they will pay, what they will lend you. That's almost got to be the same with Neto. If you said to me, Pedro Neto is 20, 25 million, and we're taking that risk on the injuries, all over it, all over it. You start talking about 50, 55, 60. It's a real risk. So to round that off, I really like Neto. Got to be concerned about the injuries. But I do feel that this is a signing Spurs will probably go and get done. Fit. A fit Pedro Neto, awesome. Any other Pedro Neto, if he's not available to you, we're back to Brennan Johnson, right? So, um, interesting one. Just to put a little bit, a little bit of meat on those bones as well. People keep saying he's the new Darren Anderson. He's the new Darren Anderson. So I went and did some digging on Darren Anderson, and in Darren Anderson's last six seasons for Tottenham Hotspur. He played 66% of the games available. So he played 20% more than what Neto averages. Over his last eight seasons, he played 58%. So even Darren Anderson, yes, he missed games, but never had the, the same number of games missed as what, what we're seeing as a, an emerging pattern for Pedro Neto. And the concerning thing is Pedro Neto is only 23, 24, right? So it's, it's that pattern which is slowly but surely manifesting every season. So let me know what you think about Pedro Neto. Now, I'll go to the, the one where I would say, I would sum this up as the good, the mayor, and the why. 
So the good is Neto. The meh is Jonathan David. For me, meh. I think he's a decent striker. When I watch him, I, uh, you know, over the years when I've watched him, I've never watched him and gone, wow, yeah, how has no one snapped this guy up? I've never felt that. I can't take away he does score goals. He has scored goals. There's no doubting that. But again, I look and say, is this the needle mover? And we talk about moving needles. If the benchmark is, will he score more goals than Richarlison? Then you would say, probably yes. If we're looking and saying, is that the benchmark in order of what we need to do to catch Liverpool, City and Arsenal? For me, no. For me, this is where I'll get called negative. That's fine. It screams of Tottenham being Tottenham. One year left on his contract. 20 to 25 million from a club where we know we can get him. It's a no-brainer for Daniel Levy. But is this the striker? Is this the striker that Ange Postacoglu wants? Is this the guy that moves the needle? Can he hold the ball up? Is he going to offer more than what you would get with Sun playing up front? Or Richarlison? I don't know. These are just questions. <laughs> Again, I'm just putting it out there. For me... That's why I said meh. He's one of those blokes, when you bring in, no part of me will go, oh my God, we signed Jonathan David. It will be, okay, not bad. And for me, we've had too many of those signings over the last uh, over the last 24 years under Levy's reign. Too many, uh, not bad. Now, the second point, uh, actually, I'll come to that at the end. I'll come to that at the end. But yeah, so Jonathan David, let me know what you think. Scores goals. Um, I don't think he's as bad as everyone makes out. I don't think he's brilliant as some make out. For me, this would be the bloke that I think if you had an Ivan Tony, for example, up front or a Harry Kane, for me, Jonathan David should be the number two striker in the, in, in the list. That you could play with the guy or coming off the bench or rotating for Euro Europa League games. For me, I don't think he's the guy. We'll see. But for me, I think this is meh. So good Neto, meh David. And then I'll move to Jacob Ramsey. Jacob Ramsey for me is the why. Why? Why are Tottenham in for Jacob Ramsey? Now, Jacob Ramsey is a good footballer. No, no doubt. In. I think he's a good footballer. I wouldn't say he's too dissimilar to the central midfielders we've already got. Um, I think there could be an argument that in any given day that he would start above some of them. Maybe not, depending on form, depending on fitness. Another player that's had bad injuries. <clears throat> Excuse me. But again, I'll ask the question, does Jacob Ramsey move the needle in any way, shape or form? Now, for me, he helps with homegrown. Standard, of course he does. But does he move that needle? What is he offering that Lo Celso, Kudusevsky, Madison don't in that attacking midfield area? What's he offering there? What's he offering in the midfield that Benton Corbus, Sumer and Saar don't? And, and if the answer is, well, no, it's just depth, then... Why are we talking about a big sum of money going? Because I've seen many reports saying it could be as much as 50 million just for the player outright, or that it could be Lo Celso going that way and we pay 30 million. So I'm asking, does it upgrade Tottenham Hotspur? He's a good footballer. I'm not, I'm not saying he's not. But again, we're at the stage now where we're just below the top four. Right? This is us. This is the top four. We're just there. So now, surely, the aim of any player coming in is, do they get you there, 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 there? And so far this window, not one of the signings we can say, yeah, they do. Not for the now. Not talking about the future before everyone starts talking about generational kids. Not for the future. Now. So, I don't know. Jacob Ramsey, for me, feels very much spursy. People won't like that word. Some will, some won't. For me, I think it's a perfect description of the football club. Jacob Ramsey feels very spursy. It feels like one of those signings where everyone berated him. And yet when we sign him, we'll find a reason for him to be, well, if Ange wants him. And then my question goes to this. If it is Ange wanting Jonathan David, Jacob Ramsey, does Ange know what a top footballer looks like? I'm just asking questions before everyone has a go. I'm not having it. I'm not knocking him. For all I know, this could be completely out of Ange's hands. And this is Lang going to or Paratici, whoever in that Rob McKenzie going to Levy and going, this guy. And Levy's going, yeah, that makes sense. If it is Ange, I truly worry 
this guy doesn't know what a top player is and will never, ever catch the top three. If it isn't Ange, I feel truly sorry for him, like I do with every other Spurs manager. So I'll ask the question, Ramsey, I've said why. That's the only word I can think of with that transfer. That will be the only word I can think of if we do sign him. What do you make of it? What's the one word you would give to Jacob Ramsey? Excited? Disappointed? Why? Meh? Average? Mm, boring? What's the what word would you what word are you associating to him, to David Tonetto? Now, if it is these three, and this is the last couple of minutes of the show, if it is these three, I'll ask this question. Not one of these three should be difficult to get done. Not one of them. As I said earlier in the show, not one of these should be difficult to get done. Jacob Ramsey, for one, right, is was not at any tournament this summer. Okay? Jacob Ramsey was not at a tournament. Aston Villa have been buying players, selling players all summer. So they are active, right? They are active. So for me, when Andrew's coming out, if, again, this is all hypothetical, but these are the three that won't go away. Ramsey, David Neto. If and coming out saying, difficult to get done. It's not on us. Moving parts. Why would Ramsey be a tough deal? Why? If that's the guy you want, why is that a tough deal? Jonathan David. All right, he played for Canada. They went out early of the of the Copper America. He's been back at his club for, what, a month? Why is that a difficult deal to get done, if that is the one? Neto. He's been back from the Euros for ages. Why would this be a difficult deal to get done? So my, my, my concern with all of this is I don't know that what we're being told is right. I've got a feeling that Spurs are being Spursy and that last week they've kind of wheeled out Ange and said, Ange, go and pacify the fans. And lots of fans live and breathe on every word this man says. I don't know what he's done, but he's done something in football that people look at him and think Pep Guardiola. When Pep Guardiola talks, you listen. This is all, this guy knows what he's doing. Ange is wheeled out and says, oh, it's difficult. And fans go, oh, see, there you go. Ange knows what he's doing. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I've seen this story. I've read this book. I've seen this film year after year after year. This is the repeat, okay? And the concerning thing is the season starts in 21 days today, right, for Spurs. 18 days for the rest of the league, 21 days for Spurs, right? Still... Still no bids on the tape. There's no, there's no bids. No one said we bid. And you would know in this day and age from the Romanos, from the Ornsteins, from the Plettenbergs, from whoever. You would know. And the worrying thing is the excuse for a very long time. And I wonder if these people will put their hands up and admit they were very wrong. I see all the time the excuse was, oh, but the Euros. The Euros finished 15 days ago. Bearing in mind, the Euros finished 15 days ago for two teams. England. <laughs> Right. And Spain. Now, with all the best will in the world, we're not buying anyone from Spain. And with all the best will in the world, the only possible one I think we're getting from England is net is, is Tony. So that finished 15 days ago. For most of the most of the countries, it finished it finished 22 days ago or 30 days ago. So what's the excuse? All those people that said there's a tournament on. What's the excuse now? Why are there no bids in? Why is there three weeks till the season starts and we still not bid for footballers? Now, just remember, those same people that made those excuses, they're the same people that say the window's still open as long as they come in before the window shuts. Fine. So when that happens, no excuses. No excuses of, oh, but Ange hasn't had time with the player. Oh, but they haven't got to know Ange's tactics. Oh, but they need time to settle. No, 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 no. Most of you are saying it don't matter when they sign. Yeah, as long as it's before the window shuts. The summer is when you bed the players in. The summer. This is where you bed them in. Come on. So look, let me know. Ramsey, David, Neto. I can see all three being Spurs players. At least two of them being Spurs players. I would be massively underwhelmed. Here's the last thing I'll say to you. I won't mention names, but someone said to me this morning, Sava, if Spurs signed Ramsey, David and Neto, this is in one of my Spurs, I'm at, well, I'm only in one, my one Spurs WhatsApp group, someone said, Ramsey, David and Neto. If someone had come to you at the end of a window and said, 
West Ham have signed Ramsey, David and Neto, you'd go, yeah, sounds like a West Ham signing. Sounds like a West Ham transfer window. I'm not knocking it, but that's what it sounds like. I know we'll have fans that completely want to spin that. For me, not needle movers. Neto on his day is, if fit. The others don't move the needle for me at all. We'll see. If this is the transfer window, I don't want anyone coming to me and saying there's a plan, there's a process. In three years, we're going to win things. This is who Ange what if, if, if that's what people are going to come to me with, at this stage, it's full on denial. Take care, everyone. Smash the like button. Please subscribe. And please don't think I want failure for my club. I just want better transfer windows than this. Take care, everyone. See you later. And as always, come on, you Spurs.